Welcome to Eastern Kentucky. For the greater part of the last century, this region has been entirely dependent upon one industry. Everything was coal, coal, coal. If you lived in this part of the country, it was coal. That's where the money was, in the coal mine. When I used to hear the word Appalachia, a few stereotypes came to mind. Poverty, hillbillies, coal. And when I learned that the Appalachian region voted for Donald Trump, I thought my opinions were confirmed. But a recent trip to the region taught me a few eye-opening things. First, it's Appalachia, not Appalachia. Yes, as the country turns to cheaper sources of energy like fracking, the coal industry that's been so vital to the region is dying. And yes, some of the worst poverty in the U.S. is present there. But what my fellow producer, Sana Michael, and I found in Appalachia was a much more human story. The story of people who are embracing the change and learning to adapt in order to survive. In order to understand their story, we have to go back to how it all started. My dad worked in the mines. Both my grandfathers worked in the mines. I'm a third generation coal miner. My grandfather was a miner and so was my dad and um, both my dad's brothers were. I worked in the Harlan County coal mines for 23 years. I think almost every man in my family has been in coal up until here recently. Large scale mining in this county happened in 1912 and you couldn't get the coal to market previous to the railroad coming, so there was never any large-scale mining until the railroad arrived. For the greater part of the 20th century until 2008, coal supplied the majority of all U.S. electricity. At its height, the industry employed tens of thousands of people in eastern Kentucky. It even built entire towns there like Lynch and Benham for the sole purpose of serving the industry. At one time, this, the Lynch, Kentucky, where I was born and raised at, it was the largest coal mining camp in the United States. Back in those days, we had the best teachers in our schools, we had the best hospitals, we had the best uh, theaters, and even the company would even get some of the old movie stars, the old Western guys to come in here live. If you go look at the town now, you, you'd never think that there was 10,000 people that, that was in this little town. There were many immigrants, from Italy to Wales to Poland, who came to work in the coal mines. And black Americans made up a significant portion of the coal mining workforce in eastern Kentucky. There's a guy they called Limestone. He would go and get the black miners and leave them from Alabama by night to Kentucky. It wasn't only blacks and whites. You had blacks, whites, Polish people, Indian people, Mexican people. There was like 37 different ethnic groups in the little town I was born and raised in. My dad began working in the coal mines during World War II. They needed the coal for the war effort. So actually the miners weren't drafted because uh, the country needed steel and steel is made with coal. From the late 30s until 45, things were going full steam. It's back to work for coal miners of America. Lots of work. Uh, the country needed the coal and the mines were prosperous. While coal became a booming industry, miners were forced to work in dangerous conditions and always at the will of the coal companies. You know, our dads were just slaves, really. They, they, they were just slaves to the company store, like that old song, song goes. If you worked for the lynch mine, you didn't get paid money. You got paid like what you call script. And you could spend your money nowhere but in lint. You had what you call a company store. You, you had that script, they had a certain amount on it. You go get your groceries there, you got your clothes there. It was right there in the company store. Back when um, coal first started to come around here, they built coal camps. You can still go to places and see all these houses that look, you know, they're exactly the same, lined up in like little square sections. They'd work all day in the mines and you know, the rent was taken out of their, their pay for the house, the lighting, uh, like if you, you needed a ton of coal for the old fireplace or whatever, that was taken out. And the kids didn't realize any of that stuff. We just, we was just out playing and having a big time. Eastern Kentucky became known as a battleground for workers' rights, particularly in Harlan County, known as Bloody Harlan. Miners fought, many of them to the death, in the 1930s and again in the 70s for better pay and safer conditions. Because of their protests, coal mining became synonymous with union organizing. 
After World War II, uh, the mines began to mechanize and that left uh, a lot of people unemployed. So those were difficult years from just after the end of World War II uh, through the 50s, through the 60s, until 73. 1973 was a big year for the energy industry. An Arab-Israeli war was raging, which led to an oil embargo, and a coal boom across the United States. A boom that would reach its peak in 1982. For the next 30 years, the industry would continue its boom and bust cycle, and coal would remain the lifeblood of Appalachia. For a really long time, that was the only opportunity that a lot of people around here had. You know, education-wise, there wasn't really a lot going on, and work-wise, there definitely wasn't a lot going on. And when, you know, a company comes in and they're wanting to pay you $20 an hour, you know, that's a really good deal for a lot of people who've been living in poverty for so long. Since 2012, the coal industry has been on the rocks and the jobs have continued to decline year after year. So here we are four years later and almost all of the mining jobs are gone. In 2015, coal production in Eastern Kentucky reached its lowest level since the Great Depression. 2,000 coal miners lost their jobs that year alone. And in 2016, for the first time, more electricity in the U.S. was produced by natural gas than by coal. With more than 50 coal companies having declared bankruptcy since 2013, Eastern Kentucky's economy is collapsing. But will Kentuckians go down with it? Coal jobs in Kentucky are at their lowest in over 100 years, and Eastern Kentucky is one of the hardest hit areas. So in the next video, we'll take a look at exactly how the decline of the coal industry has impacted the everyday lives people living there.